Hey, how are you going? Just reading a bit about Phoenicians in Australia. I've got to share this one. Ancient Queensland mine could change the world history. ABC News, 19th to 7th, 2000. The discovery of a 3,000-year-old mine and a harbour on the coast of central Quiz Queensland is set to change Australia, if not world history. Resident Val Osborne has traced the remaining structures to early mining endeavours of the Phoenicians around 1000 BC. Mr Osborne, who has been closely guiding his discovery for four years, say the area's rich mineral deposits attracted Phoenicians to the northern Australian coast more than 2,700 years before Captain Cook. And he wasn't a captain, he was a master. Uh, Mr Osborne says the discovery at Freshwater Point near the big coal port south of Mackay has attracted worldwide scientific attention. It includes huge seawalls designed to allow exporting by sea. They were labour intensive huge. The one at Serena is almost 800 metres long. The harbour wall and the boulders are positioned polished granite and they are set in iron slag, cement and copper slags. I mean it's a monstrous thing. You could put three 200-foot ships end-to-end -end in there, as it is calm as a mill pond, beautifully engineered. Mr Osborne says the structures will further, will further dated when archaeologists visit Serena. We've also got a Phoenician bell temple, and it's typical. We've also got a cemetery, and we'll have to wait and see what the archaeologists. Nothing has been done yet. We've got various academics around the world interested in it, of course. And I, I made a video some time ago about... Um, Egyptian brothers down at Gosford with the Gosford glyphs, um, but apparently it's been fat checked and debunked. But um, the Aboriginal elders I know say it's very real. So, Australian Egypt connections. Did ancient Egypt's vi Egyptians visit Australia in the distant past, leaving messages carved in rock? If so, how did they get there? Um, if we're believing. They flew between both lands and ships, maybe. Ancient artifacts, glyphs, rock art depict, depict ancient civilization. We're curious people who visited parts of the world. This is the Goths' foot glyphs. Um, apparently they crashed and then one of them got bitten by a snake and died. And then the other one lived out in old age and, you know, joined the Aboriginal tribe. That's his brother dying. He lived on bird and fish. Looks like the Sphinx. So, what we do have that combines ancient voyages with ancient aliens, images carved in stone and austral, among other places, show hieroglyphs like those found in Egyptian temples, caves, pyramids, etc. Some depict uh, extraterrestrials with large heads or helmets and dark, dark eyes, greys or reptiles. At the end of one chamber in Australia, protected by the remaining section of the stone roof, is a remarkable life-size carving of the Egyptian god Anubis above. Visual observ observation of the site makes it obvious that the worn carvings exposed to the coastal weather would have been several centuries to a thousand years old at least. When first found, the site was completely overgrown with thick vegetation and filled in with smashed rock and much higher soil land. The number of excavation attempts by interested parties have not turned up any artifacts or bodies, but sophisticated and expensive laser scanning techniques have not been applied. There is significant evidence that the ancients were well aware of the Great South Land. There were both Sumerian and Mayan legends of the Lost Motherland in the Pacific region. Australia appears under the name of... Antinoki, sorry for saying it wrong, on the famous spherical world map of the crates of Malos, even appearing on the Greek map of, I can't even say that, in 239 BC, it seems fairly certain that the maritime civilizations of antiquity were quite capable of expensive ocean voyages, particularly the early Egyptians, as evidenced by the Giza remarkable tomb and the boat. And look at this wall, how old it is yet well built limestone washed with um, drawings in it um, this is supposed to be up at Serena near where that harbour is according to Cairo, Cairo Times in 1982 archaeologists working at Fainham near the Swiss oasis uncovered fossils of kangaroos and other Australian marsupials there's also an unexplained set of golden boomerangs discovered by Prof Professor Howard 
Carter in the tomb of Tutankhamen on the 11th, 22 of the 11th, 22. The journey to Australia, Egyptian dynasties, several rock walls chronicled the tragic saga of ancient explorers shipwrecked in a strange hostile land and ultimately death of their royal leader, Lord Zeus Ub. A group of three cartouches framed clusters of glyphs recorded the name as reigning king of the Upper and Lower Nile and his son Khufu, who in turn is the son of the king of Senefru. This dates the expedition just after the reign of King Khufu, known as in Greek as uh, Chephos, alleged builder of the Great Pyramid. Uh, he may have actually been one of the sons of the Pharaoh Ra. I can't say that, sorry, who reigned after Khufu. The hieroglyphic text was apparently written under the instruction of the ship's captain or similar, with the corner glyph on the wall displaying the title of a high official or chief priest. The scribe is speaking for His Highness, the prince, from this wretched place, where they were carried by ship. The expedition's leader is described in the inscriptions as the king's son, who came to grief a long way from home. The hieroglyph sketched his journey and his tragic demise. Burial rituals and prayers preparations are all allegedly described. For two seasons we made my way westward, weary but strong to the end, always praying joy for smiting insects. He, the servant of God, has said God bought the insects, have gone around the hills and deserts in the wind and rain with no lakes at hand. He was killed by carrying the golden falcon standard up front in a foreign land, crossing mountains, deserts and water along the way. He who died before is here laid to rest. May he have a life everlasting. He is never again to stand beside the waters of the sacred myrrh, myrrh meaning love. There was a moat around the pyramid called Waters of Myrrh. The second facing wall which was much more than seriously eroded, details the tragedy further. The wall begins with a badly eroded glyph of a snake, heft, and a glyph of jaws to bite, and the symbol for twice, the snake bit twice. Those followers of the dividing Lord Khufu, mighty one of Lower Egypt, Lord of the Two Ends, not all shall return, we must go forward and not look back. All the creek and the riverbeds are dry, our boat is damaged or tied up with rope. Death was caused by the snake. We gave egg yolk from the medicine chest and prayed to our man, the hidden one, for he was struck twice. We wailed in the side entrance of the chamber and the stones all around. We aligned the chamber with the western heavens. Three doors of eternity were connected to the rear of the royal tomb and sealed in. We placed beside it a vessel, the holy offering, should he awaken from the tomb. Separated from home is the royal body and all others. Here we find the inscribed extraordinary story of the death and burial of one of the most, one of the sons of Pharaoh, Ra. So this one's in Gympie, and I remember seeing this a long time ago as a child. Uh, my babysitter used to take me there. Um, supposed to be an ape man, but is it um, like a body fossilized? The statue was unearthed in 1996 by Dale K. Berries, a Woolvai Road property. The ape is made of columnatic iron stone and shows a squatting ape figure. It is believed to represent the Egyptian god Toth in the form of a baboon. Sees a bit like a stretch and makes little sense even from a revolutionary perspective. Uh, also the rainbow serpent is similar to the Aztec uh, snake with the feathers. So this is supposed to be that uh, Toth, the baboon one. There he is again. A smaller stone idol unearthed near Gimpy Pyramid is also believed to represent the Egyptian god Toth in the ape from clutching the tar or the cost of life. The statuette is badly weathered with age. Toth was the god of riding, wisdom, and depicted as an ape by the Egyptians until about 1000 BC when he became an ibis-headed 
human body deity who recorded the judgment and the souls of enemy enmity after the world. Top symbol was the papyrus flower. Ancient terraced hill, at least 6,000 years old, has been found on the outskirts of Gympie, often Cambay Road. The pyramid structure is 100 foot high and consists of a series of terraces up to 4 feet tall and 8 feet across. Constructed of small and larger stones of stone, it was recorded by the first white man in the area in the 1850s. Uh, Gympie was a gold mining town and apparently in the 90s, mid 90s, they DNA tested the gold on Tutankhamen's uh, death mask, the gold thing, and found that it come from the Gympie region. A very small statuette of a squatting ape was found by the Widgery Shire, Shire workman, Mr. Doug Gorge, from near Traveston Crossing. Mr. George picked up the rock while working near the bridge. This is also believed to be Toth in ape form. And they were going to build a big dam near this um, area as well. They were going to flood the whole area. Unearthed at Nooseville on the Sunshine Coast was this ancient Egyptian jade, ank or cross of life. Toowoomba, a group of 17 granite stones were found with Phoenician inscriptions. One had been translated to read, Guard the Shrine of Yahweh's Message and God of Gods. Another inscription reads, This is a place of worship or Ra. Assembly here to worship the sun. Ra was the Egyptian sun god. Rex Gilroy in 1978 identified ancient Masonic Egyptian symbols among Aboriginal cave art several miles from the 1910 Potomi IV coin discovery site. An Egyptian sun disc was discovered in the 1950s carved into the hill. The carving featured the outline of a chariot showing one of its wheels Near Bowen, carvings were found on rocks which look like Egyptian hieroglyphs. Scalp beetle carved from the oinks was dug up near the Nepean River outside Penrith, New South Wales. Also, Penrith at Penrith, a 50 foot step pyramid exists west of the Blue Mountains, New South Wales. A similar step pyramid at Gim to Gympie exists. And the one at Gympie was pulled apart, and I got a photo of them. Uh, doing a bank building or a town hall, I think it is, and using one of the main stones as a cornerstone for the building, and they're all dressed up in their regalia, the Freemason stuff. In central New South Wales, late last century, a cult was recorded among the Aboriginals who worshipped a sky being called Bame. Now, there's also a movie I saw and some literature about BAME. Apparently, BAME is the number between 3 and 4 that can unlock everything if we work out what the number is between 3 and 4, where we can unlock more secrets. Um, the sole judging functions of BAME were parallel to those of Toth, who in Egyptian mythology conducted spirits to Osiris, the god of the dead, for judgment. Beside the Hawkesbury River, very old Aboriginal rock art depicts strange visitors to the continent, including people looking like Egyptians. Aboriginal tribes of the northwest Kimberley still worship a mother goddess identical to that being worshipped by Gympie district tribes, uh, which resembles that of the ancient Middle East peoples. Kimberley tribes also include some of groups bearing apparent Middle East racial features and speak many ancient Egyptian words in their language. In 1931, the Northwest Kimberley Professor A.P. Elkin, Professor of Anthropology at Sydney University, came upon a tribe of Aboriginals who had not met white men before. The professor was astounded when the tribal elders greeted him with ancient secret Masonic hand signs. He was Struck by the startling somatic features pres precedent present in the caves, he discovered the Aboriginals worshipped the sun. They also had an earth mother and rainbow serpent cult. Later, he discovered many of the words spoken were from Egyptian origin. This is the area of the famous Wajuna cave art, according to the legend of Wajuna, come from across the Indian Ocean in great vessels. The Tijuna Sacred 
stones of Kimberley region included sun symbol identical to that of Aten. The solar deity worshipped in Egypt around 1000 BC. In Atenus art, the sun was depicted as having little hands that reached out to touch mankind. There was an Egyptian god called Aten, connected to Akhenaten. I wonder if it's like Adam, like a, 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 a cell of an atom, you know. Arnhem Land and the Torres Strait people mummified their dead on Darling, Darling Island in Torres Strait. Neighbours mummified their dead by removing their stomach contents, then extracted the brains by making incisions through the nostrils excuse me, with a bone instrument. After inserting artificial eyes of pearl shell, they were embalmed. The corpse had rowed at two miles westward out to sea in a canoe shaped like the boat of Ra of the Egyptians for interment on an island of the dead. Wow. As if it's to Im imitate the Egyptians who ferried their dead across the Nile to the West Bank tombs. I wonder if they've gone and dug all that up. The natives of Arnhem Land also believe that the soul being connected to the afterlife in a canoe rowed by Willa Watt of the boatmen of the dead if the deceased have let led a good life, he was allowed to enter Procello, at the afterworld. If not, he was eaten by the crocodile. This belief is identical to the teachings of the Osirian religion of Egypt, where Toth conducted spirits of the dead into presence of Osiris with judgment. Here, if the soul's sins were outweighed by a feather, the body was devoured by the crocodile god Ba. In 1875, the Shiva expedition retrieved mummified corpses and an example of the canoe used in the funerary rites from Darling Island. World-renowned medical scientist Sir Richard, Sir Ralph A. Clinto, who examined the corpse, stated that the incision and method of embalming was the same as those employed in Egypt during the 21st and the 23rd dynasties over 2,900 years ago. On New Hanover Island, off the tip of New Island, in 1964, an administration medical officer, Mr. Ray Sheridan, discovered what appears to be the remains of an ancient sun worship temple of the Egyptian site. Among the monolithic stone blocks, there was an idol facing the rising sun, with features of half human, half bird, it stood six feet tall and it weighed four tons. Neither their Ray Sharanda, Sheridan found the carving of the wheel complete with the hub. The ruins remain remind him of ancient sun worship temples he'd seen in Egypt during World War Two. 1931 Australian anthropologist Sir Grafton Elliot Smith examined the mystery mummified remains of a New Zealand cave. He identified the skull as to being that of an ancient Egyptian at least 2,000 years old. A gold scarab was also dug up in distinct district in another location. His papers have his papers seem to have mysteriously disappeared from the Australian Academy of Science Library in Canberra. Does that surprise you? I'll leave the links in the description, but isn't that interesting? Thanks. As a child, I used to see these creatures um, in my dreams and nightmares. Uh, they sort of had... Um, it's hard to describe, but the head was sort of like this. Um, uh, it was really like a H-shaped sort of head. Um really sort of freaked me out as a child. Seen this one too. Hard to explain. Um, a lot of this um, stuff, these Aboriginal carvings were destroyed when they were building the highway. Just totally uh, got a jackhammer and just smashed them up. Um, I've made a video about the Mungo Man and the Mari Man. They're really interesting. 
They made such beautiful carvings, they documented everything that they were doing. What I want to know is how old they are, you know. Cool one with the ship. I don't know when that one was. It's amazing. Um, this is very detailed picture. Lots of stuff in it. And they used uh, red ochre to make all of this. Absolutely amazing. Check out the video I made about the Murray Man in you know, New South, Wales, uh, South Australia. It's a massive uh, geoglyph in the ground. It was discovered in 1988. I'll leave the links in the description. So, yeah. This um, shows the sea level rose where it is now about 7,000 years ago. And a lot of the art there has been produced after that time. So with pictures of turtles and fish and sharks, other marine animals that obviously recorded the phase. The government placed the Barrett Rock Art and the National Heritage List in mid-2007, but campaigns, campaigners fear threats to have it intensified in recent years as mining and energy companies drain the region of iron ore, natural gas and other resources to feed the huge demand. They actually blew up um, this cave site, if it's what I'm thinking about. They blew it up not long ago because they wanted the ore. Can't remember exactly where this one I was thinking about was destroyed, but very similar to this. They just got a jackhammer to it. So, yeah. Anyway, wherever you are in the world, thanks for watching. Um, hit the like, subscribe, share if you want. If not, it's all good. Thanks for watching. Much love. Bye now.